Right, I am live. Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Uh, if you've just uh, come over from Zaheer's channel, you'll know that I was just on Zaheer's channel uh, for the weekly Tuesday Tat Chat. And I thought I'd go live and do another one of these where we have a bit of a chat about toys from our childhood. There's a few guys popping in now. And go into eBay and find out if any of it has any value. Uh, I've done a couple of these now. I'll try and remember to link those below if you didn't catch the other ones. Um, it was inspired, these videos were inspired by a book that I picked up a while back called TV Cream Toys, which is a fantastic book. Um, I'll link that below as well if you want to go and get a copy. We've kind of exhausted most of the cool stuff that I wanted to look up in here. So now these have kind of become a bit of a trip down memory lane for myself and the guys in the side chat. So. If you do have any suggestions um, or toys that you remember from the 80s, 70s or 90s, if you're younger than old folk like me, um, then, yeah, drop your suggestions in and I will screen share. I don't think I've got a screen ready. Let me just set something up before we kick off. I'll say a few hellos in a minute. Um, if you're catching this live, there is a side chat. Uh, you can pop in and say hello, uh, give me some suggestions for stuff to look up. We just get an eBay page open. Close these other windows, bear with me. Okay. Right. So, who have we got popping in? Hey, Richard. And Hook Amur1. Uh, John. Peter Stephen says hello again all. Yeah, many of you would have been in over on Zaheer's channel for the Tuesday Tat Chat um, when I suggested that I'd go live. So welcome. Tat Peddler, Bum Crack Picker. All right, let me just scroll down. Hi, Nick, says Cohen. I'm here just setting some auctions. Oh, somebody actually doing some work. How productive of you. Okay, Stephen says, toys are not worth anything. Give them all to me, please. Well, I'll, I'll just agree to disagree there. Hi, Chris. Okay, so we've got a few suggestions coming in. Panzer, hi, Panzer. Hey, Lonnie, how are you doing? Bionic Man action figure. Okay. Was that what, was he called Bionic Man? I'm thinking of the six million dollar man. Was that something else? Um, Stephen Moore, Dino Riders. I don't remember Dino Riders. Mask. I think we did we do mask before? Don't know. Centurions, Mask, Brave Star. Let's have a look at Brave Star, because that's something I know nothing about. Is that figures again? I can imagine Brave Stars, a search, bringing up loads of other stuff. Um, oh, someone just mentioned Littlest Pet Shop there uh, in Fomatech. I picked up 38 Littlest Pet Shop figures the other day for £2. Some I've sold individually and some I've bundled. 38 for two quid is amazing. They can be surprising. Actually, I know they're not really that vintage. But it's something you will find. We'll take a look at Littler's Pet Shop as well and do it by most expensive first because it is nuts what some of them go for. Um, okay, so if you are, if you're just tuning in, this is um, going to be a little bit of research on eBay looking into selling vintage toys. Um, so what I'm going to do is screen share in a sec. And see if I can find some of this stuff. If you've got any suggestions in the chat, let me know and we'll see if we can get around to searching them on eBay. And the plan with these is hopefully I will learn something, hopefully you will learn something, and we can reminisce about stuff that we had as kids. So that's the format. So I'm just going to set up a screen share and we'll go into eBay and we'll first take a look at Bionic Man action figures. So I need that one. Okie dokie. So let's see if anything comes up. Uh, 
Let's change my keyboard so this one's a bit more noisy than the old one. Okay, so let's go solds. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so there's one there, Bionic Man action figure, 1970s. See original listing. Oh, this guy is in the book. I remember his um, black, he's got one black eye. Yeah, there you go. He's meant to have that black eye. There you go. Six million dollar man, it is what I was thinking. There we go. Maybe I looked this up before. I can't remember. Oh, you can look through his head. That's so cool. Wow. Really quite cool, aren't they? Quite detailed. So that um, original near mint, no box or engine, it says there. £35 for that figure. Let's see what else there was. Can a six million dollar man bionic chip for Colonel Steve Austin figure? 12 pounds. Another one there, 15, 23. Let's see if we can let me do it by price, see if we can find a decent boxed one. I've got a feeling we may have looked this up in another one of the shows, but I can't remember. Um highest. Six million dollar man collection for sale. Oh wow. Is that a whole collection of stuff going to the original listing oh it does that thing on ebay now where it takes you to something similar that is still for sale which is really annoying uh what were they selling uh selling my collection oscar never taken out of his insert mint in every way bionic woman never taken out of her insert let's have a look this has gone for 510 pounds. Oh, wow. Not the best photos, I'll have to say. <laughs> Come on, you'd take a little bit more care with, with something this valuable, wouldn't you? That's not even the right way around. And that's out of focus. Wow. Oh, my goodness. What? These pictures are appalling. At least that one's in focus. So there you go. A lot of money there. 510. There's a lot of figures in that, though. I would imagine they'd have got more if they'd have split that out. Let's have a quick look. Get all the way back to the search. Um, Bionic Woman Fembot action figure. 241 pounds um equivalent that was sold in australia oh it's taken me to a different listing again i've got to go in and find the original fembot so is that the one that other guy had oh no it's not let's have a look Oh my god, her face comes off. Fembot. Whoa, that's ugly. So it has different faces to cover the robot. That's wow, that's cool. So yeah, that's a good shout. If you'd see any of the six million dollar man stuff, clearly big collector's market. Right, I'm just scrolling to the end of the chat to catch up. um okay so if you've just joined us i can't see how many people we've got 54 people in currently uh we're just doing a bit of research into old toys i'm going to take suggestions from the chat see what we'll take a look at um there's another mention of dino riders let's see what comes up in let's go for action figures and solds So, Tyco 1987. So, this is late 80s, this top one, 160 pounds. Wow, that is good. Let's go to the original listing. Yeah. 
is it just me or is that frustrating everyone else when you're trying to look up stuff you can't get through to the original listing okay so 1987 um 1987 dino riders trying to source rex action figure set not jurassic park so they're shoehorning in the keyword jurassic park there pretty good though 160 pounds so you're looking at dinosaurs with guns strapped to them okay i have never seen these and it looks like the dinosaurs have got wheels Bum crack picker in the chat is saying, I hate the way eBay has faffed around with completed, so you can't check a lot of things. They can't leave anything alone. It is frustrating, this one. You have to click through. Yeah, it's frustrating. So, yeah, Dino Riders is a very good shout, whoever it was that suggested that. I've instantly forgotten. Let's see what else there was. And now I've got to go right the way back to the original list. Here we go. Uh, Dino Riders Triceratops, 1980s with box 139. Have a quick look at that one. If it will let me. There we go. So, yeah, in a strange way, similar to Zoids, apart from the fact that these are meant to be real dinosaurs, the Zoids were robots in the shape of dinosaurs and about the same time period as this i was buying zoids in the mid to late 80s no mid maybe early to mid i was buying zoids but yeah definitely worth looking at i don't know if there'd be a name on the actual dinosaur so you could tell so I'd imagine a lot of the little parts would get lost and you'd maybe just find a dinosaur. Let's see if the dinosaurs on their own have some value. There's one there, Kentosaurus. It's the sort of thing that you'd find in, the, in a rummage uh, box of dinosaur figures. There's a couple there that only went for a fiver. Let's do this by highest first. Herc Herkimer says Zoids were the best. Yeah, I was truly into Zoids. My mum said somewhere she's got a picture of our dining room table covered in Zoid parts. What I used to do as a kid was take them all apart and spread them out and then build them back together. And I had, I spread it all out all over the uh, dining room table. I'll try and find that picture one, one time and show you guys. Oh my God. Goodness, look at the top one. Dino Riders Mint in Box, 3,523 from Australia. So it's Tyco, T-Y-C-O. So I don't know, but maybe the dinosaurs. Wow, that loose dinosaur went for 95 I wonder if there's a picture showing if it says Tyco. They don't look anything amazing on their own, do they? Uh, I can't see anything unless it says it on that strip in the middle. Cool. Lord Ahab, hi there, says the toys that made us on Netflix has season two out all about old toys and the history of them. Transformers, G.I. Joe, Star Trek. That's worth looking up then. Right, I'm just going to come out for a sec and read the chat for a second. Right, I'm just going to scroll back. Uh, Peter Ray saying, yes, Nick, it pees me off when you can see you can see the original listing specifically when researching to sell and doing YouTube videos. Yeah, it just adds an extra layer that you have to go to to, to find the original listing, which is frustrating. Like you say, when you're doing videos, yeah, you have to scroll through. Keepers, that's a good shout. Keepers were mid to late 80s. I come from a household that had three sisters and me. So I had three sisters. Uh, so there were lots of stuff like ponies, Barbie, 
keepers Polly Pocket. Um, I don't think we've looked up keepers before. Do you remember? This is Tap Peddler. Do you remember rocks that turned into robots like Transformers but, but were rocks? Yes, and I found a number of those. Uh, rock Lords, I'm pretty sure they were. Um, I've sold a few. I have one mint in packet, um, but even that wasn't worth a massive amount of money. They were like a spin off. I can't remember the, who made them now either. Um, Okay, let me just catch up in the chat. Stephen Moore, I have a complete Dino Riders on DVD. It's great. So that was a TV show then. That completely passed me by. Oh, Colin's still having issues with the eBay app. Stu Mandry, anyone remember Space 1999? That was a TV show. I remember having collectible trading cards of that. Um, yeah, I don't know if they did figures and stuff. I guess they did. We'll have a look. <coughs> Karin says, question, 70s Kaplunk, please. I love that. I've bought and sold that a few times. We can have a look. I don't think there's masses of value in it. I think the most I've ever got for that was about 30. Um, and that was on Amazon. Okay. Rock Lords. Yes. Stephen Moore. Bonecrack Picker. A dinosaur with bad eyesight. He never saw us. I thought it, I thought it was, do you think he saw us? Wasn't that in, that was in Jurassic Park, that joke. Okay. Um, well, I've got a few more suggestions. Let's whiz back on to eBay. I'm going to quickly look at, um, oh, I'll try Brave Star. I'm not sure if that search is going to bring up loads of random results, though. Um, application window, that one. Okay, Brave Star was suggested earlier. Oh, it's coming up with different spelling there sold uh let's do highest price just for fun so brave star looks like it was a range of action figures then um near complete brave star Uh, vintage action figure. That's a that's a job lot as well. Yeah, there's certainly money in this. Is that just that horse? What have we got here? So that's it's like a robot horse. What was the obsession with robots in the eighties? Is that just for the horse? A hundred pounds. It's called thirty thirty. Brave star thirty thirty. Yeah. Robot horse. Who knew? Okay. Mattel Marshall Brave Star Quick Draw Action. 1986 in packet 85 pounds equivalent of that was sold in australia so that's mattel so they're the ones that do um barbie isn't it well they do all sorts of stuff well that is completely new to me don't know how I missed out on some things and was obsessed by others. I guess it's just what's on your radar. Or it depended a lot, I guess, which TV channel you were watching in the 80s. Were you BBC or were you ITV? God, there's amazing money in this. Look, Thunderstick, complete Brave Star Mattel. So that's a loose figure, £75. Just quickly have a look at that.
Yeah, he's robotic as well. Reminds me a tiny bit of Skeletor. You know, the He-Man baddie. 75 for that one figure. Very, very cool. Okay, let's come up here. Okay, so quickly, uh, this is not little less uh, pet shop. Um, not so vintage. These were what we're talking. Well, my daughter had them, so we're talking two thousands. Um, I'm still sorted by highest first. So as you can see, here's a bundle. I mean, I sold a bundle a year or two back. Um, and did pretty well on that, but I don't think I got anywhere near this much. 130 pounds sold. That's what they are. If you've not seen this before, they're, they're quite small. They're about inch and a half, two inches tall. They have big heads with bobbly eyes and the heads sort of bobble around a bit. Some have little batteries in and walk, but most don't. And you will fairly regularly find these at car boot sales. Recently, I've been finding the play sets, but no figures. Um, and then pass them by because they're so bulky. I had, if I go into this one. Oh, I've clicked sell one like this. Didn't mean to do that. Hold on. Um, I had that one on the left there. Um, and sold it just as the, the play set and got fairly good money. So the play sets are like houses and like shops and whatever, just things to put your figures in basically and carry cases, etc. There's a bunch of figures, another carry case play set. Actually, it wasn't that one. It's It was one very similar to that that I sold on its own for, I don't know, 20 or 30. Uh, that bundle went for 60, so you can see, I mean, these are not really vintage, but there's a huge market for it. There's another bundle of 52 there, it's gone for 36 pounds. Uh, somebody has themed a lot there. So there's a load of dogs and they got 30 pounds just for those 12 dogs. Uh, they're exactly the same mold aren't they just different colors so yeah don't walk past them quite often you'll see like just a bag or a box with a, a bunch of these chucked in um well worth picking up so that's littlest pet shop keep your eyes peeled while you're out and about as you can see loads and loads of solds 20 pound there for four cats and people do sell them individually. There you go. Rare prototype kangaroo, nineteen pound fifty, and one cat for eighteen. How on earth you find out if you've got a rare one is beyond me. I'm sure there'll be a website for it. But... So that's Littlest Pet Shop. Let me just scroll down in the chat. Um, Infomatech because robots are cool. They were cool when I was in my. Uh, Pre-teens, robots were cool. I was obsessed with Zoids. Barry Francis, Brave Star's horse could stand up on two legs. Fair enough. Uh, Bumcrack Pickers suggested Escape from Colditz. I think most people know that has value, but I'll be interested to see what sort of values it's achieving right now. Colditz. Um, I'm just going to come out again and read some of the chat for a sec. Uh, Barry says, I was mainly BBC, but I remember watching number 73 on ITV. I remember clearly watching number 73 um, with Sandy Toxvig. And they used to have a band that would play in the basement. So it was like a, a it's like a kind of anchor show, wasn't it? That they, they would have cartoons running and they'd have like guests in. And then they'd have a band. Most weeks they'd have a band playing in the basement. And I remember watching. Um, Kim Wilde doing Kids in America in the basement of number 73. 
that was a good show and i remember multicolored swap shop which was my favorite and then it moved on to saturday superstore yeah oh you said sandy toxic sorry i didn't read the rest of your comment i remember seeing sandy toxic on tv and was confused that her name wasn't actually ethel <laughs> was her name ethel in that i didn't remember that I love going on YouTube and looking for old um, intros to TV shows and the theme tunes and stuff. And it makes you feel like you're 10 years old again. It's awesome. Um, Lord Ahab says DJ Cat Show or DJ Cat Show with a C with Linda DeMoy, 80s Saturday morning cartoon show. I don't remember that at all. No, that passed me by. Blue Peter will always be Simon Groom, Peter Duncan, Sarah Green. Yeah, that was my that was my sort of period. Oh wow! And who else was there? Um, oh my goodness! And they had Goldie. Goldie was the dog. And then before, slightly before that, you had um, there was Petra, the dog. I remember that they erected a statue when that died, and they used to have two tortoises like fred and george or something that they used to put into hibernation every winter and then there was the woman who went on to do most haunted what was her she was quite annoying yvette fielding that was a bit later but yeah that was kind of my heyday of blue peter definitely simon groom peter duncan and peter duncan didn't he go on to do duncan dares was that him Wow, my memory is going, I'll tell you. Okay. Peter Ray says, my Blue Peter era was Simon Thomas, Matt Baker. Well, I know Matt Baker because he now does the one show. And Connie Huck. Connie Huck, who is now married to the guy, really funny guy, who does um, a, TV, a satirical TV show. Well, no, like a critical TV show. Oh, my goodness, what's his name? Really funny guy. Anyway, somebody let me know, please. Uh, Twin Red Dragons, thank you for the... Oh, ah, it was you who bought the Arsenal picture. No, my pleasure. Stu Mandry, I didn't really watch Blue Peter. I was a magpie kid because I was cool. Do you remember another one that just got uh, appeared in my head was um, Why Don't You, which I think was a Saturday morning TV show. Um. I was watching the theme the theme tune to that on YouTube not long ago. And I remember the irony of thinking this this TV show is telling me to get off my ass, stop watching TV and go out and do something else. And it was telling me to do that on TV. Seemed very ironic to me. Uh, I've just it's just jumped down. John Cotterill is in, says picked up some sealed links aftershave this weekend because of you, Nick decent money in that there can be yeah hope you do well with it hey lex how are you doing i bought a bunch of littlest pet shop um stuff for 2.99 listed it buy it now for 50 and it sold almost instantly makes me think there was something special in there there could be i remember when i had a, a job lot I was trying to look up the individual ones to, to work out if they were anything special. And it was nigh on impossible. So I job lotted it. I can't remember. I got, I think I got 50, 60 thereabouts for a, a big bundle. Okay. Right. What was I going to look up? Keepers. Right. I'm jumping back into eBay, guys. It would help if I screen shared. That would be helpful. Okay, so like I was saying, if you just joined us, um, all we're doing is kind of as a group, we're just uh, reminiscing about our childhoods and seeing if we can learn something useful at the same time by looking up vintage toys. So I was saying before that Keepers were kind of My Little Pony era. Can't remember if they were made by the same firm. They may have been. Um, Let's go keepers in vintage and classic toys. 
Right, here you go. So there were there were a range of animals and they had a key so you could lock them and keep your valuable stuff in effectively. I seem to remember my sister had like a, a white swan and you could open its wings at the back. I might be able to find that if we're lucky. Um, oh, they were made by Tonka. There you go. And this reminds me of glow bugs as well, which looked very similar and had that similar kind of plasticky, soft plasticky feel similar to My Little Ponies. So let's take a look at this one. So this is sold for £50. So there you go. So kind of pastel colours. Oh, I'm remembering these now, yeah. And see that cross there? You would have a key that would allow you to open that so you could put your little secret whatever, your little love letters from your little five-year-old boyfriend in there. Oh, and that squirrel one. Yeah, some you just sort of squeeze them and they open. See, it's got a split at the back. Those ones didn't have keys. They just opened up. See, that's the key in the front there on that little key ring. It's got a cross on the end. I would imagine the value shoots up if you've got the key because they would all get lost. So, yeah, um, made by Tonka then, which will be helpful. They, I would assume it says Tonka on the bottom of it. And by the looks of it, very much collected. Look at that. That's a joyful rabbit, apparently. Let's go in here. That's not the listing I was trying to find. So joyful rabbit and bow tie, £42.90. Oh, and that's it. You get one picture, folks, on this listing. One pretty naff picture. And there you see the key in the middle there. So if you can remember those, they're well worth picking up. Let's get back to where we were. Let's do another little scroll. Oh, that horse rings a bell. I think someone in our family had that. £38 that's sold for. I'm just going to see if I can find this swan thing. I have a quite a a vague memory of a swan. Hang on. Keepers. Swan. Ah, that looks like it. Yeah. I think my sister had this. Oh, that's not it. You're coming in, Monty. Coming in. See, by contrast, this didn't go for a lot. You got £15 on bids. Yeah, I remember that thing. The, the wings opened up on its back. So there you go. That's Keepers. Let me just scroll down in the chat. Rich says, I had a Keeper by Tonka. The name was Tango, Mint Condition and Complete. Tango. Shall I try and find it? Keeper Tango. Oh, Tango. There you go. Ah, oh, we had this, that soft one, that soft version. We managed to find one of those last year sometime. We sold it. Didn't get masses of money for the for the soft one. They did a range of plushes. So is this the Tango you had? I don't know. That's not finished. Yeah. Pretty cool things. Monty is pacing in and out now because he thinks it's tea time. Well, it is tea time. Come in here. Come in here. Come. Come. Let's stand in the doorway. Okay. Right. So, yeah, keepers. A few people remembering keepers. Um... Man like like Migs, I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh says, I saw you mention Alf plush the other day. Picked one up the very next day for 50p. Currently on eBay at 44.99 plus shipping. Well, there you go. If these videos help the odd person out, that's the whole point. 
Uh, Sybil Shepherd, otherwise known as Sib K, is in. I remember how ugly street sharks were. Street sharks, yeah. The toys sell. I think I've seen Joe Penny's pick up street sharks uh, and do well on those. Um, okay, Jason's got some street sharks. Yes, mate, that was the tango I did between six and eight picks. Oh, was that your tango? The one I looked at? No? Monty sounds like a typewriter. Yeah, in our hallway there, we've got, I've put a wooden floor down. Biker mice from Mars. Yeah, well, I've got a few other bits I was going to look up uh rock lord somebody mentioned rock lords earlier i don't i've sold them and i they didn't have a great deal of value when i had them um but i haven't had any for a couple of years so let's have a look it was a uh transformer spin-off all right let's go and have a look I don't know if it's all one word. There we go. Yeah, there was a range of these. I don't know how many, five or six, maybe more. Um, basically, transformers that transformed from a rock to a robot. Yeah, I've had most of these over the years. When I first started doing eBay, uh, which was in the late 90s, then we went full time in the very early 2000s, we would find Transformers, G1 stuff, this sort of stuff on a weekly basis. And then I think, well, probably because the, the films came out um, and then everybody was suddenly into it and collecting them. So they all get snapped up quick now. So as you can see, not masses of money in these. Um, Ten pounds there, five pounds odd for that one. Three fifty there. There's someone who had a bundle. One, two, three, four, five, six. About eight there. Went for thirty-one. So a quick look at that. It's the sort of thing you will find in a rummage box in a charity shop or at the car boot sale. And at fifty p, worth picking up. Bundling a few together. That's what they are. They're very simple as well. They're very little movement on them compared to some of the transformers, which you need a degree in transformer transforming to do. Two or three movements and, you, and you've got these set up. So that's Rock Lords. Uh, space, somebody was talking about Space 1999. Um, it's given me an option of die cast there okay so it's out of interest let's go highest price wow yeah there's some money in these dinky so made by dinky um white green and blue space 1999 so somebody there for 500 pounds has sold uh yeah so looks like they came in three colors then so you've got red green blue of that ship oh well look the original price on it 2.99 isn't that funny oh that can't be all the pictures how are people doing this they're listing this really valuable stuff with two pretty poor pictures would it have taken them that much longer to take, uh, you know, a frontal picture of each one and then a back picture of each one, the base of it? I don't know. Come on, people. Good Lord. And still sold it for 500. Is that sold? Hang on. Is that completed? Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, ended on 5th of May. Uh why is the same listing there that's a bit odd anyway so yeah don't pass these by i mean these are obviously boxed which is going to be very hard to find 
there in the hundreds of pounds let's scroll down to what we're more likely to find which will be loose stuff monty oh, he wants to go out the back door now right let's go a couple of pages in he's <laughs> he's trying to get out the back door monty what are you doing okay so loose there's still some money in it it's pretty much all that same ship dinky 360 eagle freighter and that looks like the bit that's suspended off you know beneath the middle of the ship even that just on its own has gone for 20 pounds so yeah cool worth looking out for um okay what else did we have um 70s kaplunk i think Cohen was asking about if i just put vintage kaplunk now is that all one word yeah i think so uh let's go highest and um, we should get the vintage ones right that's the one i've had a number of times um these the trouble with these is if you do see them open them up and get this get the main body of the thing out because it's really really brittle plastic what you'll find is that at the ends it it sh splits and it cracks up from here um so take a good look at it if you do see one you will see these at the car boot sale sometimes in charity shops um but they they shatter basically it's really brittle plastic so there's one in pretty good nick um what did they get for that i've had this a number of times yeah 25 pounds with shipping there is a listing on amazon i've sent um at least one maybe more into amazon of this as well that's the top end of what you're going to get 20 there 17 13 17.99 15 So there you go that's uh, i would pick that one up beyond that i probably wouldn't bother anymore with the more modern ones see there's a couple that have sold on bids um just didn't get off the ground that one ended at eight that one ended at nine there's a modern one there sold for a tenner Okay, somebody else wanted to look at Escape from Colditz. Escape from, I saw one of these recently at the boot sale, but it was in a bit of a state. So I left it behind. Wow, prices are good. This is going from highest first, so you may not get i mean i assume these are virtually mint 100 percent complete on that top one so in the 40s 30s 35 31 yeah these are all complete by the look of it yeah some good money in that I think I've only sold that once and it was a long, long time ago. Like I said, the one I saw recently, the box was just mashed. Probably should have picked it up because I don't know if spares from that going. Let's just see. Auntie, come out of there. Um, yeah, look, spares are worth money. I should have grabbed it. I didn't even ask how much it was. I should have done. Well, is it worth faffing around with these? Oh, I don't know. £2.20 for one little playing piece. <laughs> okay. Well, certainly from what we were looking at before, the board game is still selling really well for really good money. So worth keeping your eyes out for those uh, 
Uh, John Cottrell says, did you see, Nick, that the Piers Hardy horse, horse racing game that Ben bought and sold to France for 500? There was a job lot on this week for 18 of them and sold for 1,400. Wow. Blimey. I assume someone's just going to break that down and sell it on. Somebody mentioned that, I think, in the chat chat, and they said that a lot of them were broken and incomplete. I didn't see the actual listing. Jason Entwistle. I used to love the women that could change into animals in Space 1999. I don't remember the show. I do remember, like I say, there being trading cards around, which was probably well after the event. I used to pick up trading cards from all over the place. Okay. Oh, that was the one you had, Nick. Uh, Karin. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good one to pick up. Okay. Peter Ray says, it makes you appreciate what taking great photos does to your listing. It does. It it sometimes amazes me that how little effort people put in and still manage to to get great results but it does make you wonder like that the space 1999 vehicles we just looked at if they'd have used all 12 pictures actually sat them somewhere with some decent light and taken pictures all the way around could they have added another 100 onto that could they have added 200 onto that i don't know i mean i'm I'm not the best with my photos, but I they certainly a lot better than half the stuff we've looked at today. Hi, Krillin. Thanks for the super chat. Um, I've been on a while. I don't even know how long I've been on. Um, I'll probably look up a few more bits and then finish. We're just kind of chilling, really, Krillin. We're we're chilling, Krillin. Um. And reminiscing about toys and having a look up at, of a few things. Do you, <coughs> sorry, Tap Peddler says, do you remember the Coca-Cola spinners in the early 90s? Nope. Well, like fidget spinners. Coca-Cola spinner. Oh, do you mean a yo-yo? Yo-yos were huge. Oh, yo-yos is a good thing to look up. Did we look up? I think I looked up yo-yos in one of these before. Crazy money. In fact, didn't we look up Coca-Cola ones last time? Or the time before last? Stephen Moore, lots of fake vintage Star Wars items on eBay at the moment. They did a report on recarded figures on Watchdog. Oh, wow. Well, if there's value in, in stuff, they'll, they'll fake anything. You've really got to know your stuff, haven't you, to know what you're, what you're buying. It's a minefield. <coughs> Rich Sutton, if you go to my eBay page, you will see a rare Kinder Surprise case from 1989. Has 12 Pink Panther toys in it. I have it up for $109.99. Seller name Godzilla7878. I may just go and have a look. It's probably quicker to just search the thing, I would have thought. Than... Let's have a look. P um, actually, Kinder Surprise toys would be an interesting one. I'm wondering if there's a, a great deal of money in just the Kinder stuff. There must be collectors of it surely let me go and have a look so it's not sold then so i need to do active uh if i go kinder surprise what did you say pink panther pink panther yes surely that'll bring it up there you go. So this is your listing then, uh, Rich. 
Kinder Surprise Pink Panther case, 12 toys, rare 1989, two feet missing. Interesting. So this was a, what, a, you could buy the case to put your toys in as you collected them. Oh, wow, that's cool. 1989. Very nice indeed. Where did you get that from? And how much did you pay? Sorry, I'm nosy. <laughs> well, I hope you managed to get what you want for it. Let's try. Let me come out of here. Um, just try Pink Panther. And then completed. And da -da 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 -da. Oh, Jason's had two more kachings. Fantastic. Hey, Joe, my pack rat is in. Love to buy the world of Coke. Mysterious Cities of Gold. Yeah, I remember that series. Coca-Cola, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to have a look. Um, oh, I can see how many times you've listed that now. <laughs> slowly coming down in price um all right i just want to see what the figures are worth then so these are kinder pink panther from 1989 let's see if i can zoom in i've changed my keyboard i'm not sure which button does it yeah, here we go uh so 29.97 for a set there shipping from germany A load of Pink Panther parts. So there's clearly a market. Uh, Kinder Surprise. Uh, let's just do that. See what comes up. We're on highest price first and we're on completed now. Kinder Surprise radio speaker USB. They took an offer from £179. Wow. Job lot of Kinder Egg toys, 80s and 90s, 113. People selling job lots. He doesn't look like Kinder. Vintage Kinder Surprise Egg Toy Traffic Policeman. He looks like Lego to me. Bit of a Lego ripoff. 80 quid. Good Lord. Monty. Sorry if you can hear Monty. He's trying to get out the back door again. Large lot of vintage Kinder Egg cars, £42. Kinder Egg toys unopened, 132 Kinder toys, four jumbo Kinder toys, £28. Wow. So, yeah, there's a market for Kinder stuff. I think we looked up before, but I'm going to look up these Coca-Cola yo-yos again. Holy crap. Coca-Cola Russell yo-yo job lot, 539. You're having a laugh. That is mental. So there's one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen mint in packet. Wow, they are cool though, aren't they? Keep your eyes peeled, people. We've got a vintage yo-yo somewhere that we we can't find it. We were gonna list it. Oh my goodness, Fanta white yo yo, new, never used, 258 for a piece, a piece of plastic that probably originally cost them about 10 pence to make. Oh, hello. How did we get there and why can't I get out of the page? Sorry, clicked on a random link. Yeah, 258. I mean, this one is has been sold as new, but still. 
Oh, it's in its bag there. Holy cow, that's bonkers. Drink Coca-Cola yo-yo, genuine Russell, pause for Coke, vintage 1960s, 169. Box of 12 old new stock, 133. Vintage rare gold Coca-Cola Coke yo-yo. And there's a t-shirt and a hat there. Spinner winner. Awesome. Mellow yellow. Blimey, that takes me back. So yeah, Coke yo-yos. Fantastic. I, I started collecting in the 80s. Oh, was I not screen sharing? Ah, oh, I did this last time. I did this last time. I forgot to screen share. I can't see the chat, what? Because I had it full screen. <laughs> oh crap! That's so annoying. I need somebody in the chat with my mobile number to call me. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'll I'll do it back in. I was just going to say. Um, in the 80s, I start, I've gone bright red now, I started collecting drinks cans, um, all the different Coca-Cola ones and all the random drinks cans they had out there. And I got quite a big collection going, but then it was, I had quite a small bedroom and it was just taking up way too much space. Hang on, I'll read the, the super chats in a sec. So I bin them all. And I often think back, if I'd have just somehow sorted out storage for that collection and carried on throughout the 80s collecting uh, drinks cans and then through the 90s I would have had a collection of epic proportions and value as well yeah thank you Jason for the screen uh, <laughs> for the screen share for the super chat I am not screen sharing oh, I'm so annoyed I did that last time as well Krillin has super chatted thanks for that says nick please explain to younger viewers that it wasn't cool to be into star wars avengers except etc in the 90s we would never tell the girls we like this stuff it was very geeky definitely oh i can't get over the fact that i've, I've just how long was i screen sharing without screen sharing a good 10 minutes then yes lex i was blushing so I have just talked to myself for the last 10 minutes about things. <laughs> screen share the kinder. Okay, what I'll do, I'll, I will screen share. I will actually remember to press the button and I will go backwards through what I was just um, showing. How's that? I've got to go all the way back to, to um, Rich's case. Ah, <laughs> oh, good Lord. Kay Horsley, question, Nick, was your Coke cans washout? Yeah, I used to just keep all of the cans I found or used myself. But I only did it for about six months to a year and then got rid of them all. OK, right. You can see what I was looking at. So I was looking at these. These were the Coca-Cola yo-yos. Um, mellow yellow. Look at the prices on these, it's just nuts. And there's that box of 12. This was the Fanta one, which was um, listed as new. It did have its little packet, 258, 539 pounds for that collection of whatever it was, 12, 13, no, 14 actually, which was mental. And then Kinder stuff. That was the radio at the top there. So if you see that knocking around, let me just go into that for you. Um, it's listed has, oh, it says it's ended. Did it end without a sale? But it's showing us sold there. Anyway, let's go and have a look. Oh, it's been removed. Okay, so I can't go into that. So that's modern, obviously, it's on USB. 
worth grabbing those if you see them that's its box so let's go back through we had a look at some these were the pink panther toys uh that rich had in his set which i will show you in a second pink panther parts Um, but down here somewhere now these were your previous attempts to sell it rich and your current active listing is this one if i go back in monty, monty i know it's dinner time but give me five minutes so yeah nice pictures way better than half the listings we've looked at tonight i don't know if you said before because clearly i wasn't keeping an eye on the chat it's always the way as well whenever i'm not screen sharing i'm not dipping in and looking at the chat who pays 258 pound for a poxy yo-yo exactly uh the kinder case was bought from spock for a fiver no way oh that is so cool well, if you want spare feet, there was somebody that was selling a job lot of uh, spare parts. Isn't it a shame when things are almost complete? Really frustrating. So there you go. Kinder eggs are banned in the US, aren't they? Says Stu, I have no idea. Why would they be banned? Maybe because of the small parts? Don't know. Barry says, years ago, my uncle used to collect beer cans. He would make a hole in the bottom to drain the beer so the ring pull was intact. Wow. Is he still doing it? I also started, I used to be a big, big collector. I don't really collect anything anymore. This is kind of my surrogate collection. I did start once i was drinking alcohol myself i used to really like um they started in the 90s um with bottled beer to actually print on the label rather than having a a, a paper label on they would start printing it and i started a collection of printed beer and cider bottles and uh, there's still quite a few companies that do it now um and I was, this was when I was a student, so it was in 93, 94, that sort of era. And in my student digs, I had all these bottles lined up everywhere. Because I liked a beer, still do. And um, I don't know what happened to them. I think when I moved out, I recycled them all. But yeah, the trouble with collections is they, they rapidly build up and become like a space issue. So, yeah. Right, you need two screens like me, says Karin. I need to just keep referring to the chat whilst I'm screen sharing, and then if I haven't pressed the button to go, I will be aware. Yes, choking hazard, says Stephen. Oh, okay. Lex says, yep, ban kinder surprise, but guns are fine. Go figure. Yep. Let's not go down the road of uh, international gun policy. Andrew and I have very strong opinions on, on that. It is madness, though, when you think about it. Okay. Oh, Stephen's collecting vintage Star Wars again. Well, it's a bit more expensive these days. You're not allowed toys in suites in the U.S., Yes, Kinder is banned in the US as it could cause choking to small parts. Yeah. And Karin used to collect badges as a kid. I think they all went in the bin. Didn't we all collect badges? I'm sure every kid from the 80s had a, a collection of badges. Mine was on a, a, an old like um, muslin cloth, you know, for babies. And it just I just had badges pinned all over it. And I used to collect rubbers. Andrew used to have a collection of rubbers, as in erasers. Um, yeah. And I used to collect postcards. Got rid of all of those. 
open the chat on a phone or tablet i could do i could have the chat open on my phone oh in saying that my phone's just died Stu Mandry just checked maximum $2,500 fine for importing a single kinder egg into the US. Wow. So I've got to make sure I don't have any in my luggage in a few weeks when we go to Florida. Stephen Moore has 24,000 comics. Takes up a lot of room, I would say so. Good Lord. Lex has still got a Rolf's Cartoon Club badge. Should burn it, really. Yeah, he fell from grace quite dramatically, didn't he? Hundreds of key rings on a wire coat hanger. Yeah. I think collecting stuff like that was so it was so big in the 80s like we didn't have I don't know we weren't so distracted by our phones I guess it was just fun to collect random stuff I had all sorts of collections but then so did my granddad and I was really close with my granddad I kind of got the bug from him uh we're in Florida um what is it 10 I think we fly out 10th of july i'm thinking might be wrong not very good with dates okay well i'm going to draw a line under this there i'm still mortified that i was screen sharing and not sharing with my audience what a plonker um hopefully you enjoyed that hopefully there was something in there that was useful maybe a little gem of information that you can take with you and uh pick up something that you didn't know about beforehand um i do enjoy doing these um i will continue to do them while you guys enjoy them so let me know uh leave me a comment below after this is up on my channel um and yeah we'll do this again sometime it's people sharing what they used to collect i used to collect key rings and started collecting again and also my six-year-old loves to collect key rings now. That's cool that you can, you know, share that with your with your kids. Oh, shrinky. See, Barry's talking about, I remember you used to be able to shrink crisp packets. I used to do that in the oven. Put crisp packets in the oven and they would shrink down to about, I don't know, a fifth of the size. Yeah, because shrinkies were a thing that they used to put in, uh, like, shreddies, I seem to remember. Monty is off again. See, Monty's been going around there and then trying to get out the back door. It's still shut, Monty. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope that was fun. I hope that was useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for putting up with me messing up the screen share again. Can't believe I did that. Ah. You can still do that, Nick. What? Oh, shrink crisp packets. I guess you can. I just kind of grew out of it. Anyway, take care, guys. See you later. Thanks for joining me.